Passport is my way to Snam Kelengal and Jigalanga, Wingo Boy Lungula Quays, you're right. And the Lapa Shuka Konami by Patelin and Amalunga Conj and Gomteng, Gimnagi Kamalam, Dingo CP or speech in Zaum, be Kumbag and Bogay, Manau, Gangal and Yelling, Bogay, Tingo Sadam, Pagano, Bolet, Stello, and go O double one seven one four six nine one eight and six nine one nine. Email to Gayona eat a consumer at SAPC dot CO dot a day, or Gandaka Sanobel and Natimo Slobel on Flangelo, Nobelidua, no Facebook, no Twitter. My Twitter handle is at speech and Zaum. Good afternoon. Easy access to finance and credit has not only led to an unprecedented growth in the buying power and accumulation of assets by consumers, but also promises to deliver the majority from the historic reality of deprivation and poverty. While this is good for the country's future, experts say it might be the economy's weak point, as this class of elite people are increasingly slipping deep into the clutches of debt. And this worrying trend of black middle class over-indebtedness is revealed in a study by the University of Cape Town. Ungeda kabanzi kwa kusimwa soko soko nchui la imatiele ni kwenye zilaba tangu bila masamkele upal slot yena oi debt councilor numla uli wengambani i octagon asmeno Elias Shamatla oli chanti zi yule miba ya batangu ukanda kipa yako kumbeto sasa sasa soe kapas nonjenga lazui John Simpson yena wina pepe agupanda nzulu kwa zilaba tangu consumer research expert kwenye la sisi ni gentleman thank you so much for joining us and welcome to you lungo dola kwa Perhaps uh, let's start with you, Mr. Samson in Cape Town. Thank you so much for joining us again and welcome. Uh, tell us a bit about the study that you conducted uh, that has to do with uh, over indebtedness, uh, the relationship of the black middle class with their finances and so forth. Well, I think the first thing to appreciate is that the growth of the black middle class has been incredibly important mm -hmm. for the economy of the country. Um, without that group of consumers growing bigger, um, our economy would be actually probably in recession as we sit here right now. The fact is that our economy is a consumption-driven one, so we have to spend in order to grow the economy. You know, we, we, we don't take too many things out of the ground anymore, and we, we don't seem to be very good at agriculture. We don't compete too well with the rest of the world. So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, our economy does depend on the internal growth, and the internal growth comes largely from spending. But the question which I think you have raised is, has the spending been accompanied by giving away too much free or available credit? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and I think you have to be very careful in generalizing and saying all black middle class people, for example, are over indebted. In fact, they aren't. There are plenty of them who, some of whom have been through the recession in 2008, come out of it very well, and they understand fully the difficulty in be, of being over indebted. But you also have to recognize that people who are perhaps starting to get into a middle class lifestyle very often do indulge in using far too much debt to, to get that lifestyle. And they're the ones who are getting into trouble, which I think um, is a very serious problem for the country. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the very poor end of the economy, that is people who aren't black middle classes as, as we would define them, there you suddenly find something very different. You find that um, much of the recorded debt is actually only a minor part of the real debt that people have. So they borrow from other people, they borrow from the Spaza, they borrow from the Mashalisa, and so on. And none of that is recorded. And so when you look at that group, you think that they are far less indebted than when you look at the middle class. And in mm -hmm. fact, that's, that's not true. Mr. Samson, um, let's talk about... The other uh, issue is okay. that... No, it's fine, I can continue. The other issue is that one of the things which, which middle class people really un want, and understandably so too, mm -hmm. is to get access to buying a house. Mm -hmm. Well, you would normally use a mortgage to get that, and mortgages are very, very difficult to come by, particularly for uh, newcomers onto the market. So they tend then to use unsecured loans, and I'm sure your panel will agree with me that that's probably the worst way to buy a house, but that, I'm afraid, is what they're left to do. So mm -hmm. the, the change in the economy, the, the change in banking and so on, has really been sometimes helpful, mm -hmm. but very often in the long term unhelpful as far as consumers are concerned. Mm -hmm. 
Let's talk about the, the vulnerability of the consumer and, and the desperation to, uh, to have the money at the moment, uh, perhaps, let's say, to buy a house, as you've indicated, and, uh, and the, the closed avenues to access this account or this credit uh, that could perhaps lead them to having an, an unsecure uh, a debt and so forth. Well, I think if you're looking at the, the, the middle class, particularly the new middle class people, people who've uh, only recently achieved that level, they've had a lot of catching up to do. And in order to catch up, they've had to borrow. So they, you can't buy a car, a house, nice clothes, a watch, a cell phone, and everything else all at the same time. So what you do is you go to whoever's prepared to lend you money. And uh, as I'm sure many people appreciate, the accumulation of all of this debt mm -hmm. ultimately means that they are totally uh, over indebted. And, and, and they will struggle to get back to a point where they can live a normal life. Um, because people who lend money don't like you to walk away. They yeah. actually want to get their money back. And so <laughs> the, the result of that is um, you see this issue of people having to go to debt counselors and so on. And you know, the, the, unsa the sad thing about this is that they normally go there too late. And, and, mm -hmm. and that's where I think we have serious, serious problems. All right. Well, let's come to our Johannesburg studios. Uh, we'll start with you, Paul. Uh, thank you so much for joining us once more. You basically deal with people every day who come to you vulnerable at a very urgent state where they want to be set free from their uh, credit or debt uh, chains. Basically, take us through uh, the process from when, as a consumer, you're offered credit to a point where you are accumulating more debt over more debt over more debt to a point where you can't resist, basically. I think it all starts with the consumer's budget and, and, and they end up in a situation where they say, I need to borrow something because something has happened. And mm. about 12% of people borrow because something has happened. There's an emergency, I need to pay something and, and they borrow money for that. 22% of people actually borrow money to buy an asset, a home or a car or whatever, and that's fine. But 63% of people actually borrow to, to subsidize their lifestyle. And that's where the problem starts. Uh, if you look at going back to your budget, you say, if you spend less than 35% of your income on repaying debt, you're not in trouble. Mm. But if you're spending more than 50% of your income on debt, you are in trouble. Um, mm. So, so when, when you now approach a credit provider, you, the credit provider will say, can you afford it? And that's where the, the, the game starts because normally consumers will not reveal their true position but they rather actually sus suppress mm -hmm. the, the expenses mm -hmm. in order to get the loan. Mm -hmm. Now I have this loan, I have, uh, I, I say th this is very nice, I have problems in repaying it and then I start to take another loan and that access is just too easy uh, for the consumers. And then before you know it, you have too, much, too many credit agreements and you can't make that thing yes. work anymore. Mm. That's where the problem starts. All right, let's come to you, Elias, uh, being uh, a, 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 an activist, a consumer activist, and also a former debt mediator. What is the profile of a person in the state most likely to be? Well, <coughs> uh, speech, what happens is that, as Paul has said, and mm -hmm. the professor has already alluded, they will start up uh, accumulating debt. Mm -hmm. And then when they have maximized their debt, for example, uh, when they apply for a federal credit, and when the first credit provider says, no, you've got too much on your plate, then they start panicking. And then that's when they start looking for, for consolidation loans mm. to be able to repay all those debts, uh, meaning put them in one basket and pay one installment, which is sometimes more expensive mm -hmm. than what they have at the moment. And then because they can't get credit anywhere else, then they go to much mm. I've seen most of the middle class living on the payday loans. For example, you take a loan that you have to pay it off by yeah. a month end, yeah. and that's your life. Mm. But then, gentlemen, you know, the gospel of um, saving better, budgeting, you know, having a better relationship with the finances has been preached over the years. Where do you think that perhaps as uh, the banking sector or perhaps as our financial advisors, we are going wrong, that you are not doing enough perhaps? Or do you think that the translation of this information to an average consumer is just not making sense to them? I think it's the responsibility because there's a lot of responsibility on credit providers to make sure that you can afford it. But there's even bigger responsibility on the consumer to say, can I afford it? And you have to be honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and, and in many cases, you actually get to a point where you say, the only solution is, is to actually get more debt. And they'll actually acquire more debt until the last credit provider has said no. 
mm. and then they run for trouble. Mm. Where, whereas if you actually have a cash flow problem early on in your life and, and at that point in time you can actually resolve it, then it's much, much easier. I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. um, a consumer uh, approached us last week. Um, he had an income of 14000 and he said, my budget is a mess. I'm short, I have to go to pay their loans. I borrowed money from my friends and family. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm short about 5,000 rand a mm. month. So we analyzed his budget and said, but hang on, if you take a loan of 13,000, only 13,000 from a registered bank, you can actually repay all those debt and then you can save 4,000 rand, which he needed to save for a lobola. Mm. Uh, he then actually said, okay, this is fine, this is good. And th his budget would work. He went to the credit provider the credit provider said, no, 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 you qualify for 27, not 13. Mm. So what did he do? He took the 27 because mm. mm. he couldn't resist the 27,000. Yeah, yeah. he, uh, he actually only needed 13,000. Mm. That's where the problem is going wrong to say um, uh, he actually took more than what he required. Mm. And that money, the, the, the th more than 13,000 is gone. It's, mm. it's spent. Okay. Now I have is a problem. So that's where we, ne we need to address yeah. it. Let's talk about the issue of social responsibility, especially coming back to uh, the black middle class. These are people who come from uh, average or below average uh, families. They go, they are sent to the best schools, perhaps university. They get some tertiary education. And the minute they start working, they already have this log of responsibility from their siblings to going back to unemployment employed uh, parents and other family relatives. Yes. And then when it comes to uh, this exchange of knowledge uh, between you as debt mediators and financial analysts or rather advisors, uh, what, what, what do you give, what, what knowledge do you give to such uh, consumers? Well, first of all, you have to be truthful to your family members. Let them know your situation because if I have uh, transgressed or progressed from my family, I'm mm -hmm. the first one to buy a car. Mm -hmm. I'm the first one to stay in the suburb, mm -hmm. and yet they expect me to sponsor them. My sisters are making babies there, they're not working, mm -hmm. and then I have to send their kids to school. Mm -hmm. And everything is on my shoulders yeah. as, as a middle class. Mm -hmm. Now here I am, I've got their debts, I've got my debts, and I can't cope anymore. Mm -hmm. So when they come to us, we tell them, you know what, be truthful, face reality, mm -hmm. drop a budget, tell yeah. them that you know it's time for them to, 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 to look for, for a job. Mm -hmm and try to limit those expenses, okay? Mm -hmm. If you can downgrade, please do. Because for example, um, since you have moved out of your house, you wanted to buy mm -hmm. the property in a nice suburb. Mm. Now you want to, the car that can match that house. That can match that and house. And then it get caught up. Without looking at your yes, budget. Yes, yes. All right. Again, Mugale Maske, City Tag, Please join us after this break. The number you can dial is 0171-4691-186919. And then that way you'll be able to be part of our discussion right here in studio. We'll be back shortly. Email consumer at sabc .co .za. Or rather, visit our face, uh, Facebook pages and Twitter pages. Uh, tweet me directly to speech in Zaumbi and go check out our Facebook page. And that is Yilungalako. Mr. Simpson, Professor Simpson, rather, uh, let's come to you in Cape Town. Uh, before the break, I, I threw a question of a social responsibility, especially for the black middle class. Uh, what sentiments do you have uh, <coughs> with these, you know, these consumers in relation to their finances and how they draft their budgets? I think there's a very fundamental issue here, and that is that for most uh, black middle class people, they are, as you rightly pointed out, first generation mm -hmm. in this particular position. They're the first group of people who have managed to get to university, get a good degree, and when they leave, they then see their counterparts and they try very hard to catch up very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And they, that's why they tend to buy as many things as they do, almost always at the same time. Mm. And that ends up by putting them heavily indebted. Mm. If they were to look at the white middle class counterparts, most of whom are second, third generation, they already have many of the things, lifestyle things, which you need to be a middle class person. So they are at a huge advantage compared with their counterparts who are first generation, have just left university, have got nice jobs and are getting nice money for the first time, mm -hmm. but they don't have any assets. So they have to buy the assets. And in buying mm -hmm. the assets very, very quickly, playing the catch up, showing other people that they're middle class and so on, there's a huge likelihood of indebtedness uh, coming to play. Mm -hmm. And then you add to that 
the fact that they have what one would call extended families mm -hmm. who have an expectation that they will be to some extent looked after by these people now who apparently are wealthy because you can see they've got the nice jobs, the cars, etc. Yeah. So you, you, you look beyond just their own circumstances. You need to compare them with their colleagues, white middle class people who have those things, but they've accumulated them over two, three generations. So for many young black people, almost inevitably, getting a degree and a very good job kind of almost puts them into indebtedness mm -hmm. almost immediately. Mm -hmm. and, and the other thing is, you, we mustn't lose sight of the fact that the marketplace who are <laughs> selling things to people, mm -hmm. they have targets, yeah. and they know people can't afford to buy these things for cash, so they too offer credit. Yeah. And the combination means that you find a lot of indebtedness in the new black middle class. Yes. Let's talk about the access of credit, basically, especially for uh, the students who are still at university. A very shocking uh, trend now of students with credit cards, uh, students who can go to banks and get access to a uh, loan to buy a car, even though there's no proof of uh, affordability or perhaps, uh, you know, the status is based on their uh, pocket money, perhaps. Uh, what do you think, perhaps, or what do you think should be done uh, to prevent the students and to assist them uh, for their own good in the near future? Mm. Well, it, it's quite interesting that many of the students who come to university on a bursary, which has been offered them by an outside organization, part of the bursary program, they go on programs which teach them how to manage themselves after they left university. Mm -hmm. But there are lots and lots of others who've had to borrow money to get to university, NUSFAS loans, and they've got to pay them back. You don't just give them the money, you have to actually pay it back. So they leave university, they're already indebted, whether they like it or not. Yeah. So if you add to that all the things which they want to buy, it just means there's this ever, ever increasing amount of debt which they're getting, and worse, in a greater inability to pay back. And that's, I think, the fundamental problem. Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Simpson, let's come to you, Paul. Uh, don't you think when it comes to financial education that perhaps you know, this should start at an early stage, perhaps at your first year of university, at your entry level of university, or perhaps you know, instead of learning about these things when you're already working and you're already frustrated with uh, debt at the time? It should actually start much, much earlier, uh, sooner, because mm -hmm. uh, children should be giving pocket money mm -hmm. so that they can plan and they can actually spend according to the, the pocket money because it's too easy to get. Um, it's like a, a loan is very easy to get. It's mm -hmm. a process to repay it. Mm -hmm. It takes time to repay it. And that principle is not understood mm -hmm. by, by uh, consumers at a young age. Mm -hmm. um, so going back to the home and where our parents can actually do their kids a favor by giving them a... a, 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 a pocket money on a weekly basis and let them manage the process yeah, out of that. Yeah. Coming to university, the same applies. If you, uh, if you actually then walk into a job, you think you, uh, the salary is fantastic yes. and you have all the money in the world. Mm. And after the first payday, you realize it's not that it's much. It's actually not as glorious. It's not that much. All right. Uh, Okay, let's, let's hear from our callers. Uh, 0117146918 and 6919 is the number you can dial to be a part of our discussion right here in studio. And right now, it seems like we've got Pumzile who's calling us from Tembisa. Hello, Pumzile. Hello, Jani. Sikwana Mamang Jan. Thank you. Yeah, bo. Lutin lupo lo ako. Eh, ulu ulu vola mungutu yi lama dek, yaba dek kanzela. Mm-hmm. So, Mama, what is it? 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 Uh -huh. uh -huh. Okay, Mam Pumzile, thank you so much. Uh, I think we get the gist of her concern, basically. She says that, you know, these debt counselors, uh, they offer to pay the debts, you know, the, the usual process. They deduct monthly 150 rents from their bank accounts and only to find that three months down the line or six months down the line you get a final notice from your creditors who mm. say that you haven't actually paid. Mm. What causes that? 
Well, obviously, the, the, if the consumer pays the debt counselor, or they're not supposed to pay the debt counselor, they actually th uh, um, they should be paying the credit provider via a payment agency or, or so on. Um, they must still check that the money actually flows through on a monthly basis. So don't think because you're paying somebody, he's going to pay it over. Mm -hmm. I think the process should be followed up. So but what's, what's the usual agreement, the initial agreement, when you go to your debt counselor? Isn't it that you know we're going to cover the most urgent debts, and then you're going to give us a, a particular subscription period, perhaps monthly. Uh, what happens is that they will actually look at the total debt position um, and your income. Mm -hmm. They will start first of all by, by doing a budget for that individual to mm -hmm. say you, this amount of money you need to live and this amount of money you can actually use to repay that debt. Mm -hmm. That amount of money that you have for the, the debt, they will then divide between the different credit providers. They will deduct one amount from, from your, your account and then pay your credit providers every month. Mm -hmm. um, so that process continues until the debt has been uh, been repaid. Okay. Let's uh, yes. Let's come to you, Alice. I, I just please. want to add mm -hmm. on to that. I think uh, Umama Lapo, uh, what she has to do is mm -hmm. to obtain her or request her monthly statements. Yes. Because the debt counselor doesn't get the monthly statements. She okay. gets the statements, and then if the payment does not reflect, she can inform the debt counselor timely to say. Uh, my payment is not reflecting here, what happened? And then the debt counselor can be able to follow up with the payment distribution agency. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you may find that the, the, the payment distribution agency has paid in into the suspense account mm -hmm. and the money has not been allocated. Yes, it's a yes. matter of allocation. Okay. All right, yes. gentlemen. Let's just come back to the issue of financial education. Alias, I believe that because you deal also with consumers, the issue of a budget, okay. how important it is to budget that you mustn't get excited by your big salary that perhaps, you know, the digits that are more than what you usually got before. Yes. Uh, let's talk more about yeah. that. I, I've got a file here in front of me mm -hmm. of a consumer who is in a corner. Yeah. It's a budget of a typical middle class consumer. Okay. What happened is that uh, he was making like uh, seven digits uh, salary in a year, okay. which is six digits a month. All right. And all of a sudden, the company told him that they are restructuring, therefore he has to adjust his lifestyle. Mm. He bought a two million property from the estate at the, at the initial stage. Remember when you buy the property from the developer, yeah. it's cheaper uh, on phase one. On fa yeah. Yes. So now the property has accumulated value, it's now worth four million rent and he's owing the bank about 1.7 million rand. Mm -hmm. So now he wants to see how he can be able to, aff um, to pay this loan, but his money is not enough because he has got other debts yeah, as well. Yeah. So we did the budget for him and then we said, you know what, we think it's advisable to sell this property because it has got equity. Mm -hmm. You're owing mm -hmm. 1.7, let's say 2 million rand. Mm -hmm. You're owing 2 million rand, the value of the property is four. You've mm -hmm. got 2 million rand equity that you mm -hmm. can get and buy another property. Yeah. Yes. So now, while he tried to do that, or while he was considering that, the wife said, no, we cannot move out of this four-bedroom to double-story property. Mm. So it's the issue of accepting your, your fate mm. at that moment. You have to accept that I've got a problem now. I have to move out of this property and buy the property that is affordable and mm -hmm. suitable to me. Maybe also buy the property that is closer to work because you don't have to stay in the estate property. In the estate property, property, yeah. Because you can't yeah. even afford the rates and levies in that mm. area. All right. Well, yes. uh, join us again after the break. We'll be talking about more about this financial education. And just to remind you that uh, they say that there's good debt and then there's bad debt. If you want to find out more about that, well, join us after the break. Stay with us. Well, welcome back. You're still watching Yudunga the Local right here on SABC One. Uh, we're coming to you live right here on Auckland, Auckland Park Studios in Johannesburg. The number to dial it to be a part of our discussion right here in studio is 0117146918 and 6919. And before the break, I said that you must send me some of those messages on Facebook. And right about now, I'm going to read those messages you've sent us on Facebook. I've got George uh, Vongani Wagamatuns who says, Do not put yourself deep in credit while you know that you can't afford to pay the credit back. Because you earn peanuts, it is good to wait for the right time. Good things come to those who wait. And then Ngetelo Makumbila says, credit is not good at all. I ended up blacklisted and now I'm suffering. I can't afford to buy a house and a car. All, bank re all banks reject my application. Such a sad, uh, a sad reality for most of um, uh, middle class citizens right there. Paul. Now we're going to come to the uh, credit, uh, you know, uh, the good credit rather, as I said before the break. There's good debt and then there's bad debt. I'll just take us through. I believe that you've got a slide that you're going to show us. All right, it's going to appear right there. Um, take us through basically that slide. What is, uh, let's start with this one. 
what consumers can expect in 2015? I think the first important thing is the consumer to understand their position in the economy. Because mm -hmm. we, we have an economy where you earn a certain salary, uh, rates are fairly flat and maybe they will be increasing. But we also see that there are cost increases. Mm -hmm. Electricity is going to increase and so on. So you have to understand that it's up to you as an individual to actually say, how am I going to earn, what am I earning and how I'm going to pay. Yeah. There's no easy solution for, this, uh, for the consumer. Mm -hmm. So in other words, uh, don't expect the economy to help you. You have to help yourself. You have to help yourself. So that's uh, in terms of the first slide to say you are part of the economy, but mm -hmm. you are responsible for your own budget. Mm -hmm. Then. I think All the right, next we're going slide. To go to the next one. The next slide talks okay. about good debt or the, yes. what, what is what unexpected is expenses and so on. Unexpected forth. expenses. Mm. So what happens is that most people don't save. The saving rate in South Africa is less than 0.2 percent. Mm -hmm. So what happens when something happens, um, unexpected happens? Yeah. You have to borrow. There's mm. a funeral. You have to borrow money. If your car breaks down, you have to borrow. So that's causing people to become over indebted. There's unexpected uh, expenses, and that end up uh, with too much debt. And then they say, I ha my income is too low. Mm. Um, it's actually not the income is too low, it's actually the debt that actually went, yeah, to, went a too little bit too, to too high. Mm. So um, we don't need to go through the others, but there are lots of reasons why people go and expect um, uh, uh, budgets to, to be impacted on in terms of their budget. But okay. then we, we come to good debt and bad debt. Mm -hmm. um, uh, good debt is always something that you can afford, number okay, one. What is good debt? A good debt is a debt that you can afford, number one. Okay. A good debt kind of is where you actually buy an asset that can appreciate in, in value. Okay. Number three is that if you invest in your education, that's good debt because okay. you'll be able to earn something uh, in the future yeah. or more in the future. Mm -hmm. So the graft of somebody that's educated will increase uh, exponentially over years. Bad mm -hmm. debt is always a bad debt if you can't afford it. Um, one of the uh, um, callers said but they, 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 uh, they cannot access credit. That consumer probably can't uh, afford any debt, therefore any debt is bad for that consumer. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, is that the um, bad debt, debt is bad if you're using it to repay existing debt. So if mm -hmm. you borrow money to repay existing debt, you, it is always mm -hmm. bad because um, uh, you're in a, in yeah. the, in a situation. Right. And then thirdly, is it if you actually borrow money yeah. to consume, borrow to eat, borrow it's to bad. Eat. Yeah, yeah. seems like something, you, uh, sorry, Elias, you want to? Uh, just to add on to what he's mm -hmm. saying, there's a perception in the middle class that you have to have multiple properties. Yeah. People think they are investing in yeah, multiple. Because you, you, you know, you, you look yeah. good. You but look like your you primary residence yeah. and you want t two properties that you can uh, rent them out. Yeah. But mm -hmm. now, if you don't have a, a tenant for two months, what do you do? Can mm. you afford that? You, you have know? to pay the expenses. You have, of to, that you have to pay the, 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 the loan of, of that property, of those properties. Mm -hmm. For example, if you've got a tenant and the tenant says to you, I've been put on suspension, uh, however, I know very well that I'm going to win the case at CCMA, and that takes that six months. That takes months, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, you have to apply for eviction. Yeah, yeah, all right. Let's come to you, uh, Professor Simpson in Cape Town. Do you think that perhaps when it comes to the understanding of good debt and bad debt, uh, just in general, coming back to the issue of knowledge, do you think that the middle class understands these terms, uh, that perhaps they resonate to them? <coughs> There's no certainty that they should, and I think that's a very good historical reason. Um, the, what, what many people have been brought up with, one of your speakers said early on, is you've got to learn from when you are a youngster, when your father gives you pocket money, how to use that money. That's all part of the learning process which you go through. Mm. Um, but if you haven't lived in a home where people give you um, pocket money, then mm. you haven't started your learning until you've got your money from uh, after leaving university. So there's a huge gap in the learning process which many, many black middle class people almost certainly have to work through. And as I said, they, they, they become very much subject to people wanting to offer them uh, cre credit. What, what you haven't spoken about up until now is the willingness of many, many companies in this country to give people credit. So mm. if, if you are at the receiving end as a consumer and, and you find that when you want to buy the car, the house, etc., in every case, somebody is prepared to lend you the money, um, then, of course, you are a target. Mm. And, and the target is how businesses actually work. So, in a sense, you can talk about the Consumer Protection Act, you can talk about uh, education, et cetera, et cetera. But the reality is that for many people, it's the first time they've been in a situation where they've been offered so much credit, 
and they really find themselves in a very, very difficult position. Mm -hmm. The other thing to recognize is that a lot of the people who offer credit aren't very nice people. And you shouldn't be surprised that Afri Bank, African Bank went bankrupt mm. because they were very nasty offerers of credit. Mm. When you borrowed money from African Bank, you didn't just borrow the money. You had to also take out things like life insurance. You had to pay them uh, an administration fee and so on. We, we had one case of a young lady who borrowed 10,000 rands, which she paid back in 18 months to African Bank. It cost her 94%. Mm -hmm. And the reason is because of all these add-ons, which she didn't expect at all. But they said to her, if you don't pay these extras, we won't offer you the credit. Wow. Um, it's quite interesting, too, that she also signed a garnishy order at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, actually this poor woman, no matter what happens, was going to pay back the money at a tremendously high interest <coughs> rate. Mm. And, and she simply hadn't got a clue of what was going on with regard to the loan process. Yeah, and one, yeah. one of your speakers said, she talked about multiple properties and so on. Well, you multiply what I've been saying from many suppliers of credits, and it kind of shows you why many people are so deeply in debt, um, even though they seem to be well-educated, have very good jobs, et cetera, et cetera. And yet beneath the surface, they are very, very heavily indebted. Mm. But then how muscled is our legislation and other interve uh, interventions when it comes to uh, protecting the consumer in these instances where you go and you, 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 know, you, access, you want to access credit, but then you're told that you can only access on terms that you take a life insurance and all these things that po possibly are not really mm. necessities to you. Uh, d is there any kind of legislation that perhaps protects the consumers in these? No, not necessarily. You, you, you sign a document when you take out the loan which says that you're prepared to do these things. Uh, my own view is that many companies have found ways around the Consumer Protection Act because on paper the Consumer Protection Act is a very, very good act mm. in terms of what we're talking about. But you also need to go back to a year or two before that act came into operation. That was the time when many, many banks, for financial institutions and so on, yeah. were lending money to anybody because they knew the Consumer Protection Act was coming. It's like we're seeing at the moment all these ads for liquor on TV. Mm. And the reason is because they are anticipating that the law with regard to liquor advertising is going to change. All right. So we, we're still living in many ways as a result of what happened before 2008. All right, all right, Mr. Simpson. Well, that's Mr. Simpson who's joining us now, Cape Town Studios, uh, being a part of our discussion right here in studio. We've got a caller who's calling us from George, and his name is Sam. Hello, Sam. Welcome to Yilongolo Lako. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I would like, like just to make um, a comment on, um, on the issue of uh, financial education. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the issue that you're really talking about is very important to, to us as youngsters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, most of mm -hmm. the, the young self, um, once they get the job, they don't know how to save. And for instance, instance for myself, um, I earn um, 4,500 friends. Mm -hmm. And um, my boss has been putting me under pressure to, to buy a car, to take a loan so that I can buy a house. Mm -hmm. But um, I've told him, no, um, I cannot, uh, with what I've, uh, I'm earning now, I cannot really afford um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the, what he's putting me through. So that is what people need to understand, not to put themselves under pressure or mm. to, to go into things that they cannot afford. Okay. Yeah, you get my point. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Sam. We appreciate your contribution right here in the show. Well, Sam is basically saying that you need not to put yourself under pressure. And I believe that the education uh, we're going to have right here on the show coming from you, Paul, uh, after the break is going to help a lot of uh, consumers who are, even those who are currently under pressure, but cannot come out forward and say that I'm currently struggling with this and this issue. Well, ease access uh, to finance and credit has not only led to an unprecedented growth in the buying power and accumulation of assets by consumers, but also promises to deliver the majority from, of them from the historical reality of uh, deprivation and poverty. After the break, we'll continue with our discussion right in studio. Don't go anywhere. Sinam kala ko kung nagbawo ito kumpleto ba na wong ay ngalin yung kubo ito ay pasyudo ko sa lumang ay bago nang bolie ito that is o double one seven one four six nine one eight and six nine one nine nam klasik espetya umba wa matiala ay kuba uzuzewe na matiala at kaka kaka unga bisa sa gengo ba mautini and I believe that on the caller we've got Ngosnati who's calling us from KZN. Hello Ngosnati, welcome to ilong ilong lakotad. 
Well, I think he's referring to debt counseling. Debt counseling, yes. It, it, he says basically that you deduct 2,000 rands from his account. Uh, you are expected to cover most of his uh, debt, mm. but then you end up paying 700 rands. He wants to know what happens to the remaining amount. Okay. I think that is debt counseling fees and PDA fees that yeah. Paul can talk to. So, how? okay, fine. Uh, Paul, early on, you, you were going to take us through debt. Uh, it's debt counseling, right? But you said that before you even get to that stage, there is prevention, there is still hope. Uh, take, take us before that, uh, through that before we get to the corner. I think what, what is important to understand, there are thousands, millions of consumers that are stressed mm -hmm. and they say, what do I do today? Yeah. How do I deal with the situation? And it's always easy or good to actually start to say, where am I today? Um, draw up a little piece of paper to say, how much do I owe? How much do I earn? And try to do your budget. Say, am yeah. I in trouble? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. And there are many cases where if you do that, you can work yourself out of, out, of, out of a problem situation. There's no need to apply for debt review. So if you just take stock, do your budget or get a professional to help you mm -hmm. with your budget. Very often, if you do it at that point in time, it's easier to do. Because what we see very often is that consumers wait until it's almost too late where they f uh, when they ask for, for assistance. If they do that when the first sign is there, it's very easy to help them All right. and they don't need to apply for it. So that's okay. the early step to take um, for, for the consumers to say, acknowledge I have a problem. Mm -hmm. That's the most difficult part of the entire process for the consumer to say, I am in trouble. I am in trouble. Okay, um, let's go back to the Colin Kayser then. Uh, Ngosnet wants to know how much uh, do you deduct as uh, debt advisors uh, to go through the whole system or process rather of debt consul yeah. consultation? In terms of the debt counselling process, there's a um, sign-on fee that, that is uh, early on in the process is equal to the first payment, mm -hmm. then there's legal fee, but the aftercare fee is not more than 5% um, of the of the uh, instalment. So it's not 700 rand sounds too high. Mm. It's, it cannot be 700 rand yeah. unless the repayment is, is very high. Mm -hmm. But it's subject to a maximum of 400 rand. So 700 rand sounds a little bit too sounds high bit in too terms high. of it. Yeah. So that call, I would advise him to go back to his debt counselor and ask for a statement to say, what is my uh, repayments like and uh, what is the breakup? Because mm -hmm. the money that you get is, that, is one amount and it's every credit provider gets a bit of that money and the, the debt counselor receives his fee. All so right. there should be an explanation for it. He must approach his debt counsellor. Mm -hmm. If not, he can, uh, uh, um, he can actually check yeah. on his statements. Okay. Alias, do you come across such cases, uh, similar cases, as a debt advisor and yes, mediator yes, yes, and all yes, that? Yes. Mm -hmm. For example, you may find that um, he doesn't understand how to read the PDA statement mm. because he gets a payment distribution um, agency statement that says, okay, this is how much you have collected from you, which is 2,000 rand that he's talking about. And he says a certain amount is paid to his credit providers, but the certain amount is not accounted for. Mm -hmm. I think it's a matter of discussing with the debt counselor yeah. to understand where the rest of the money went to, meaning in terms of the PDA fees mm -hmm. and the debt counselors mm -hmm. after care fees. But mm -hmm. I want to say this, uh, to add on to what Paul said earlier uh, regarding the issues whereby we find ourselves over mm -hmm. Credit providers have got a um, target market for certain products. For example, credit cards. They mm. go to universities and other t uh, tertiary institutions to sell credit cards. Mm. They say to the students, how much is your pocket money? If a student says my pocket money is X amount, they take that as an income. And then they offer a student a credit card of 500 rand. But is that even legal? I mean, aren't they acting on the vulnerability of the students? But they've got the right to say no. I think the Credit Act is very clear on that, is that the, the consumer must be able to afford the money. But uh, there's two obligations, the mm. selling part of and then the taking part of it. And I think part of the problem that we sit with is too easy to say yes. Getting the debt 
is the easy part. Repaying mm. it is always the difficult it's part. It's always difficult. Yeah, because, for example, you get a um, monthly allowance mm. from your uncle. Mm. Then you don't, you don't pass a certain subject. He penalizes you by not giving you that allowance anymore. Mm -hmm. You can't afford to pay that credit card that you took mm. or that living account. And then get blacklisted before you even leave in university. Mm -hmm. And you have limited your chances of getting employed in the financial institutions. Yeah, Mr. Simpson, Pro Professor Simpson, rather, let's come to you in Cape Town. Let's talk yeah. about the, 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 the vulnerability or rather the, the limited ability of consumers to say no uh, when they cannot afford debt uh, because oh. they want to fit into a, a particular well, social class and so forth? I think that's very true, mm. uh, but I'd like to raise another point, and that is that most times when people offer you credit, particularly if you are from a registered financial institution, um, you will find that there are pages of documents mm -hmm. of which people have to sign. And most of them, most times, the consumer just doesn't really understand or doesn't read or doesn't appreciate what they are actually signing. Mm. And so after they've signed the bottom of three, the third page, the signature, the fourth page, mm -hmm. they actually don't know what they've signed. Mm -hmm. and, but they've been offered the credit. That's what they want. Mm. And so it's also an issue in terms of education of people in terms of to find out what it is that they are actually signing. And I bet you that your colleagues on the platform in Johannesburg will, will admit quite openly that one of the big problems is that consumers simply don't know what they are actually signing. Mm. And this happens time and time again. It's very quick and very easy to say, just sign the bottom of the page, T's and C's apply, etc. cetera. Um, and, and, and really, it's, 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 I think that's very problematic. Mm. I, I also really do appreciate that people um, do want to buy things to keep up with their neighbors, their colleagues, and yes. so on. That's very natural. That's something which is, happens in every country in the world. The difference is that for many of our people, they are first timers in this situation. They haven't learned through history, their parents, and so on. And I think that is a very, very fundamental issue in this country, which is mm -hmm. quite unique. Um, that the fact that since 1994, our country has changed as much as it has, has allowed people to start to become better educated, have better jobs, and so on, mm -hmm. but they've played try to play catch up very, very quickly, okay. and it's costing them a lot of money. All right. Well, uh, thank you uh, so much, Mr. Simpson. Well, let's now, now take uh, our final ad break. We'll be back after this break uh, to continue. And just to close uh, a few particles of our discussion, uh, but at the end, we want to give the consumer all the information that they need to have. We'll be back after this break. Stay with us. Welcome back. While we're still continuing with our discussion, focusing on the over-indebtedness of South Africa's mid black middle class, uh, my guest right here in studio is Paul Slot, who is the debt counselor, and next to him is Elias Samatla, a consumer activist, and we have Professor John Simpson coming alive from our Cape Town studios. Uh, gentlemen, before the break, we're still talking about the issue of not knowing what these consumers are signing and just the pressure of fitting into the middle class. But Mr. Simpson, uh, Professor Simpson, rather, I think we should start with you uh, just with solutions. What do you think that consumers uh, need to take from your study, especially your findings? Well, I would hope that they will at least see that there are many people who've been through the pain and suffering which we've been talking about. They've come out the right side. They now are reasonably under indebted. And hopefully people can learn from them because they are real life people who've been through all of this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then when it comes to the issue of understanding, the issue of financial education, that seems to uh, lack somewhere or rather not be as available to some consumers. Uh, what do you think then that consumers should do in order to school themselves and not act on their vulnerability when it comes to accessing credit? It, it, it's sad to say this, but I think the biggest problem comes from the debt providers, the, the credit providers. Who, mm -hmm. don't, who allow consumers to uh, get away with becoming indebted. Mm -hmm. um, and my view is that just as much as there should be consumer education, yes. there should be pressure on credit providers as well. Mm -hmm. Just your closing uh, remarks, Mr. Simpson, so that to say goodbye to you. Uh, what do you have to say to consumers in general, those who are already in debt and those who are still, uh, perhaps, who still have affordable credits right now so that they don't find themselves in, in this situation? Well, if they are indebted, they desperately need to go and see a debt counsellor, desperately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because if they don't, they will be far worse off than they are in time to come. When you hear of consumers who take out debt to pay off debt, then you know we've got a real problem in our hands. Yes. So maybe also universities have a role to teach to people as well as to how to handle their mm -hmm. finances once they leave university. 
All right, Professor Simpson, thank you so much for joining us right here on Ilungu Lago. Well, that's uh, Professor Simpson who's joining us now, Cape Town Studios from the University of Cape Town. Speak to, to us more about uh, financial education and just his findings on some of the studies about black middle class and their indebtedness. Gentlemen, let me come to you in studio. Uh, just as you are giving solutions, let's come to you, Paul. Uh, what do you think consumers first thing need to act on as they find themselves in this situation? I think it's a belief that every budget, good or bad, has a plan. So what is my plan for my budget in terms of making it happen? And the easy starting point is to say, if your debt repayments uh, take up more than 50% yes. of your income, you are in trouble. Take it. There you are in trouble. There's mm. a problem. Uh, if you do that early on, you can fix the problem yourself. If, if you can't fix it yourself, go to a debt counselor, get a budget, um, sort it out. Mm -hmm. prevent the legal uh, notices from legal the action. Uh, legal action from the credit providers mm -hmm. and then go to a, a debt council to actually repay your debt. Mm -hmm. That's what the act is there. The act, the act, National Credit Act protects yeah. you in that process and it gets you debt free before you know it. All right. Let's come to you, Elias. As an activist, what gospel are you preaching to consumers? Okay. You have to, you, you have to buy a Bible first. Okay. And the Bible is? Credit report. All right. Obtain your credit report from credit bureaus. Because it's gonna give you a it is gonna give you a synopsis of what's happening in your financial world. Mm -hmm. It's gonna show you how many judgments you have, how many defaults you have, and the total amount of accounts and balances that we yeah. have. Then you can be able to plan from there. Mm -hmm. Number two, if you have got judgments and defaults, you can go to a debt mediator to help you to negotiate with the attorneys to come to some sort of an arrangement to clear that debt. Alternatively, you can go to a debt counselor. Mm. Again, another thing is that most of the companies have been doing financial awareness okay. instead of the education. We have to con uh, concentrate on the education. Concentrate on the education. Yes. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us right here in Yilungu Lako. Unfortunately, because of time, we have come to an end of our discussion. Let me thank our studio guests and the one who joined us uh, from our Cape Town studios, Professor Simpson. And we will be able to Please join us again next Friday, same time, same place, for another consumer rights topic. From me, Sipio Gwanzawumbi, and the rest of the Yulungulolako family, it's keep well. Until next time, Menekwa Shalimnand. Oh, man.